and Leo will give a talk. talk about the uh, paper entitled uh, How to Circumvent to Safatex Lower Bound for Linear Governing Schemes. This is a joint work with uh, Kamen Kensuka and Kotaro Suzuki, all belongs to NTT Corporation. Here's the agenda of this talk. Uh, so first, I introduce a lower bound and uh, briefly explain our result. So first, uh, let's get started by introducing the governing scheme. The governing scheme is a mechanism to evaluate the circuit without knowing truth values. For example, we, we consider a governing single AND gate. Single AND gate. The left side is represent a plain AND gate, and the right side is a garbled AND gate. If uh, uh, each truth values is encoded to the k-bit random values, ka0 and ka1, and this is a random value, so one cannot Im inverse the uh, truth values. And uh, in this example, garbled uh, gate contains four ciphertext. Each ciphertext uh, contains uh, one of output keys, and one can, com one can decrypt one of ciphertext in evaluating the circuit, in the uh, evaluating the garbled circuit. For example, the input is zero and one, uh, the output is zero, and in the garbled circuit, uh, input is ka0 and kp1, and one can decrypt the second ciphertext to obtain kc0. In the classical scheme, we produce uh, proposed by Yao, uh, contains uh, four ciphertext per gate, and each element is k-bit. So this contains a four, four k-bit per gate. Uh, there have been several studies to reduce the ciphertext size. For example, GR3, GR2, FreeXOR, FreeXOR, and recently, uh, the Hall, uh, Rosrec, Evans, uh, propose a half gate scheme that is the most efficient. This costs uh, 2k bit per AND gate and 0 bit per extra gate. And in addition to the proposed half gate scheme, the how et al. also, also propose a lower bound of the size of garbled circuit. Uh, they first define the uh, linear governing scheme that captures uh, all practically efficient governing schemes. And they say, uh, they, pro they prove that lower bound, that say a linear governing scheme must have two k-bit ciphertext per AND gate. And of course, uh, as shown in the previous slide, half gate achieves the bound. So half gate seems to be optimal from the lower bound. However, in this paper, we propose a linear governing scheme that requires strictly less than two k-bit ciphertext per AND gate. You may think that this result is a contradiction of the lower bound, but we think that uh, this scheme does not contradict, but rather circumvents the lower bound because that the proof of the lower bound assumes, uh, implicitly assumes that each element, uh, each ciphertext is a k-bit. But our scheme requires uh, only one k-bit element, but actually do require four two-bit ciphertext. So the total is five ciphertext. So we think that uh, our result is not break, but uh, circumvents the, the lower bound. Okay. Over the next, we, we want to explain how to garble single AND gate. Before I explain uh, precisely, uh, I'd like to introduce uh, one basic observation. Uh, 
in a governing scheme, we often use the qubit element as a key and ciphertext and uh, so on. And qubit element can be regarded as an element in not, not only uh, GF22K, but also Z subscript 22K. It means that we can use two operations on qubit element. The one is, uh, one is uh, an operation in GF22K is a bitwise exclusive or. It means that, uh, for example, there's a one one or plus, there's a one one equals or zero. And the other is uh, integer addition. For example, there's a one one or plus, there's a one one equals zero one one zero, which is different from the other. Okay, uh, we explain the setting of the uh, governing and single and gate. Uh, we will try to govern single AND gate with one uh, with single KB ciphertext G, and we uh, and for the efficiency reason, we want to uh, all operations consist of hash function, addit, uh, plus, and O plus. Okay, so next, I explain how to govern AND gate is. We give an illustration on evaluating and governed AND gate. The first, uh, imp, uh, there are four cases in the input, zero, zero keys, and zero, one, and one, zero, and one, one. And these keys are ev evaluated and with uh, ciphertext G, and finally, uh, one, one obtains the output key. For now, we consider AND gate is so the three of, uh, th three of four input case cases uh, should be mapped to the one values, and th the last case, when the input is one one, should be mapped to the case one. So the first is uh, we want to define the input up keys and the evaluation function satisfying this map. So the first either one is uh, using a free XOR like definition. We first define the one key is a zero key or plus delta, and the evaluation is a hash function. If we define so, uh, the second case and the third case. Uh, are mapped to the same values because uh, ka0 plus, uh, plus kb1 equals uh, k0 or plus kb1 equals k1 plus uh, or, or plus kb0. And in addition, to map the first cases to the same value, we, s we set the ciphertext C as this. If so, the, this hash value is cancelled and mapped to the same values. Okay, at this point, uh, the, the, the mapping is <laughs> uh, constructed, but however, you know, this scheme is uh, clearly insecure because that, uh, uh, from the KA0 and KB0, uh, both, output, uh, both output keys can be generated because uh, of course, uh, K0 and KB0 can be evaluated to the KC0, and, and KC1 value is uh, equal to the hash of KA0 plus KB0 because this equation holds. To avoid this problem, we use, uh, we use uh, plus instead of O plus in hash. We redefine the one key as a zero key plus D. If so, uh, and, and, yeah, and uh, inside of hash function, we use plus. If so, the one key is to be the hash of KA0 plus KB0 plus 2D. That cannot be, compu uh, that, that cannot be derived from the KA0 and KB0. This construction avoids a previous problem, but uh, that is still be insecure because uh, 
uh, suffer text, text G is only used in the first case. So if the, uh, if the suffer text G is used, uh, adversary may know that uh, the input is zero, zero. So the next idea is uh, I, I use uh, suffer text G in evaluation with probability half. We additionally introduce a choice bit, B0 and B1, and the output key depends on this choice bit, B0 and B1. If so, all evaluation procedure uh, is performed as uh, uh, plus input keys, ha hashing that, and O plus suffer text G with probability half. So this procedure does not read the information of the input. This scheme is, oh, uh, this scheme is almost secure, but the remaining problem is that choice bit of another case uh, should be kept secret. For example, uh, B0 is uh, distributed to, uh, uniformly random, but the joint distribution of B0 and 1 minus B0 is, is not uh, uniformly random. So we have to hide the another case of uh, the, the choice of another, choice bit of another case. To solve this problem is very easy. Uh, just covering B0 and B1 by classical technique that is introduced in the first slide. Classical governing schemes uh, require four cipher text, but each of them is not k bit but two bit because each cipher text contains bi and uh, permit, permit bit that that is used for the permit of four cipher text. So then the resultant uh, Governing algorithm for single AMD gate is the first is set input keys and permit bit as this. Uh, one key is zero key plus D and choose the permit bit. And then define the case, uh, output keys by using the choice bit B0 and B1. And, and finally encrypt B0 and B1 and next permit bit by using the classical governing scheme. This governing scheme uh, finally output all keys and the cipher text, five cipher text. But k bit element is only the first element and b0 c gamma, b1 c gamma, and b2 c gamma, b3 c gamma is all two bit cipher text. So this governing scheme contradicts the lower bound. Okay, next we explain the case of uh, governing multiple gates and, uh, and other types, for example, uh, or, or NAND or something. Let's consider the, this circuit. For input AND gate, input AND gate means that uh, one, of, one, of input y, uh, one of input wire of the gate is also the input wire of the circuit. If so, we can choose the difference D and apply, apply, uh, apply our technique as a single AND gate. So one K B cipher text per input AND gate. So it, it require, uh, this number means that the number of uh, K bit cipher text. And for, for the other gate, we call uh, mid AND gate. We cannot choose uh, difference D because D is already defined as a difference of the output keys. So we have to adjust the difference to uh, divide one to the other using another cipher text E. So for mid gate uh, requires a two k bit cipher text. Next, we consider other type of gate. Uh, I, I don't explain uh, precise, but uh, or next one and, and uh, other standard gates can be governed in a similar way. 
And if the governing an extra gate, we can further reduce the cipher ticket by using the free extra technique. The result is uh, no cipher ticket per input extra gate and single k bit cipher ticket per mid extra gate. Security is only for this slide. Uh, our scheme achieves a simulation based privacy that is defined by Berare, Huang, Logaway. In the paper, we prove the security in the random worker model. Actually, uh, our scheme may be uh, proved, uh, by, uh, proved by assuming a variant of correlation robustness, but this assumption is very complicated and very artificial, so we, we prove the security only in the random worker model. So the, fi the final is uh, efficiency comparison. The first is uh, uh, comparison in plane setting. In plane setting means that uh, the topology of circuit is public and the type of gate is, uh, is also public. In this case, the most efficient scheme is half gated scheme. This requires uh, zero qubit cipher text in extra gate and uh, two cipher text in AND gate. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, for simplicity, we consider the gates that consist of AND gates or extra gates, two types of gates. If so, uh, in half gate scheme, you uh, co cost zero cipher to extra and two cipher text for upper AND gates, and totally, two times k times the number of AND gates. And in this work, uh, zero or one kb cipher text for extra, uh, and one or two cipher text per AND gate. And finally, we obtain the, uh, the total bits of garbage circuit he here. The left side is uh, means that two bit part of our governing scheme. And the right side is a k-bit k -bit part. And uh, one k-bit uh, one k-bit element is required for the input and gate. And two, two cipher text is required for mid and gate is, and one, one k-bit element is required mid extra gate. So comparing this result, uh, our scheme is more efficient than half gate is if this equation is false. But it, but this equation uh, intuitively means that the number of input and gate is, is larger than the number of uh, mid extra gate. And I'm not sure, but I think uh, most realistic circuit, uh, this equation does not hold, so I think uh, half gate may still be the most efficient in the plane setting. And the next comparison is uh, uh, in a semi-private function setting. Semi-private function means that the topology of the circuit is public, but the type of gate, it, it means XOR or AND or NOAH or something, is private. In this setting, the most efficient, uh, the uh, most efficient scheme, the, uh, the most efficient known scheme is GRR3. This requires to totally three times k times the number of gates. And this work cost, di cost this one. That is uh, always mm, good, uh, better than the GRR3. So the SPF setting, our scheme is the most efficient scheme. And we note that uh, for theoretical sense, uh, uh, our, our scheme cannot grab an identity gate. Identity gate means that pass through the one of input. Such circuit is meaningless, but uh, uh, classical scheme and the GRR3, uh, GRR3 scheme can govern such, such gate. This is a summary of result. Uh, we show a governing scheme that circumvents a lower band. 
garbage down the gate contains less than two qubit, but uh, instead contains additional four two-bit type addresses per under gate. And efficiency depends on the structure of circuit. And in plain setting, half gate scheme may still be the most efficient scheme. And in SPF setting, ours is the most efficient scheme. Thank you for listening. So any comment or question? Quick question. Uh, is it possible yes. to have like garb link but using both representations for different part of the circuit? So for example, you have a part of the circuit that has a lot of AND gates, you switch to your representation, and then once you get to a part that requires more XOR, then you switch to the half gate approach, which has, could this approach work? Mm, at least now, I, uh, I have no idea. So uh, half gate scheme is a very uh, complicated and uh, optimized to use uh, uh, free extra techniques. So it is difficult, I think. Well, I mean that y you're hmm. outputting uh, labels at some point, and then those labels, you now use them for the half gate approach instead. For now, I don't care, sorry. <laughs> okay, thank you. Do you have any ideas on how to um, sort of restore the free XOR hmm. freeness? Like for XOR is in the middle of the circuit. Because that, that would kind of make your scheme a winner unequivocally, right? Sorry? Uh, so, Right now, in your scheme, the XOR gates are only free if they're at the inputs. Uh, do, you, yes. do you have any ideas on how to make them free everywhere? Uh, for now, I, I don't have an idea. <laughs> Sorry. That's fine. Uh, I, think, I think it is difficult because uh, the difference is uh, automatically defined as a difference of the output key. The output key is distributed, uh, uh, distributed uniformly random. So I, I cannot control the difference for now. Okay, any other questions? Comments? Okay, let's thank. We are, we are okay.